Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the uh, special meeting of the Federal Way City Council for October 6, 2020. Um, this is our uh, um, a pre meeting before our regular city council meeting for purposes of, of uh, discussing and reviewing our biennial budget and, and for a study session. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to, the flag. To, to the flag of the United the States of America. To the United States, the United of, America. The United States of America. And to the Republic. Stands. To the Republic. For which it stands. And to the Republic. Which it stands. For which it stands. One nation. One nation. One under nation. God. Under God. Under God. Under God. Under God. Indivisible. 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 With liberty and justice for all. With liberty, With liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Okay. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, we have a, a study session this evening, as I said, for the budget. Uh, the department presentations today will be uh, uh, the mayor's office and Bill Vadino, our policy advisor, will uh, uh, will lay that out. Then we've got the lodging tax advisory and the economic development uh, task forces, um, not task forces, but committees and, and uh, uh, by Tim Johnson. Then um, after that, we'll have city council um, uh, with our council president, Susan Honda. Uh, with that, let's turn it over to Bill Vadino for the mayor's office. Hello, everybody, while I share. There we go. Is it sharing? Okay, uh, here is the uh, mayor's office budget for 2021-2022. And the mayor will be here, of course, to assist with questions. How's my volume? Because I'm coming in over uh, over the phone, so we don't have an That's echo. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Good. So, of course, uh, as you know from your materials, uh, the mayor's office, and this is more for the public who are watching, the mayor's office is the executive branch of the city government, includes the mayor who's elected and represents the people of Federal Way. The mayor's office provides management direction and coordination of all city departments and activities in accordance with the policies and direction of the mayor and the city council. Goals and objectives, implement economic development initiatives, facilitate council decision-making and policy development by providing unbiased, thorough and professional analysis, and then carry out mayor city council policies and directions effectively and efficient, efficiently. Other goals and objectives instill a customer service culture and a can-do attitude in city government. Manage city resources in a responsible and responsive manner. Lead and coordinate the city's role in local, regional, and federal issues. Also, lead and coordinate proactive and effective communications with citizens, the news media, and city employees. Communicate the city's vision, mission, and goals, as well as day-to-day -day service information to constituents and key stakeholders. Now, when you look at the uh, expanded, uh, the full chart, of course, that's not the presentation uh, we're making today as far as the numbers. There's, of course, council administration, city clerk, which you've received a, a presentation on already, economic development, which I believe is today, emergency management, which you received previously, government affairs, human resource, which you've heard for, and of course, public information. So that's the overview. And looking at the chart, you can see the mayor's relationship with the court, with the consul, and the other positions, the policy advisor, communications coordinator, the executive assistant, executive assistant to consul, Jerry Lynn, the administrative assistant, the line to the departments, economic development, and then of course, uh, emergency management, human resources, and the city clerk. So the highlights uh, for this budget, which, which basically focuses on administration, is the proposed operating budget total is $1.3 million in 2021 and $1.366 million in 2022. This is an 8.7% or 66,992 decrease to the 2021 proposed budget from the 2020 adjusted budget. Uh, the major line items include salaries and wages, a decrease of 53,000, primarily due to restructuring 
of the position of the office manager to executive assistant and reduction of COVID-19 one-time help. And then of course that affects benefits, a decrease of 13,235, primarily due to restructuring of the position office of the position of office manager to executive assistant. And here are the numbers. Basically, you can see that um, th these are all how all the positions lined up. Uh, there was an office manager that's not there. And you can see the graphics coordinator and all the positions. So the staffing remains the same uh, 2018, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Uh, looking at the revenue, you can see the, um, the effects there on the total expenditures from 2018 to 2022. And you can see the, uh, the decrease. Now the mayor's priorities, of course, and this is from um, you know, the overview from two weeks ago, is number one, security of residents and property, important. Number two, maintain a clean and litter-free city. Three, avoid layoff of current staff while maintaining current level of service. Four, fully fund most reserve accounts. Five, have a structurally balanced budget and six, continue recovery from the COVID crisis. Looking at the accomplishments of the past two years, just a survey, of course, the town center steps, the initiative that's about to uh, occur and it's in the final formulation process for the eyes on federal way to meet those needs we talked about in the previous slide. Um, the new African, uh, African American black quarterly meeting, the restoration of the police budget, the 30 for 30 volunteer initiative, which we will now see and start to get into fruition as we start to do our letter events. And of course, uh, what you're all working on right now is the time capsule for 2050. Also, the establishment of the neighborhood connection meetings, the establishment of Facebook Live town hall meetings are now key role regionally in the winter storm outreach, the Brick Lake Trail extension, our continued work on the Sound Transit Light Rail expansion, and of course, our continued collaboration on the university initiative. Other accomplishments, um, the SCORE jail departure, which was momentous, and the agreement and the savings that came from that, the water and sewer tax judgment that we received, uh, other things, you know, because it's the little things that make things happen, the abandoned shopping cart ordinances had a great effect, um, the establishment of the severe winter overnight emergency shelter. And then of course, our very, very recent joint venture with the school district to increase internet connectivity, not only during COVID, but as we move into a new model of education. Our COVID-19 response, just a quick summary. Of course, the outbreak advisory team mobilizing very early along with our Greater Federal Way Emergency Operations Center activation. Your and the mayor's very early support of food banks and social services at the very beginning our deployment that continues with the CARES Act business grants to the businesses, our distribution of uh, CDBG funds for rental support, uh, the establishment of the Business Resiliency and Community Continuity Task Forces, which meet late this week. And then of course, uh, the school district use of Channel 21, which went from graduations to now instruction that is ongoing. Moving on to our vision for 2050, as we look at 2021 key projects, of course, is the Vision 2050 Task Force that now we will be getting established within the next few weeks here, now that we're almost face-to-face. -face. Our continued sound transit collaboration, looking at the vision for the use of the former target site. We continue, as you noted in LUTC last night, we continue to work on airport and noise health issues and, and be aggressive in that regard. Uh, in the budget and it's always constant no matter what what money is available our it security focus and then of course the veterans monument which we've received some money for and we want to continue to to work on that initiative as well too but the bottom line is a 2021 budget so uh, in conclusion basically we need to continue our efforts to make federal way a great place to live work and play Questions for myself or the mayor? Okay. Council, any questions? Okay. Um, hearing no questions, why don't we, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good job, Bill. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, now let's move on to uh, lodging tax advisory and the economic development um, uh, department uh, delivered by uh, Tim Johnson.
Jim? Which would be PowerPoint right there. And then start it up. Oh. Hang on just a minute, Mayor. Jim? Thank you. Mayor, Council, Tim Johnson, Economic Development. <clears throat> Uh, this is 2021-22 budget. Our mission is to produce solutions to attract, retain businesses, jobs, and investments. Um, I could turn to your budget book, but I think it's more important for you to see this. And the budget for economic development has been basically the same since 2014 when we transitioned um, from community development and separated. Um, the only difference is that budget has been supplemented by efforts from the um, your staff uh, from grants from the Port of Seattle since 2018. Now, if you look at your budget data, um, it shows that there's more money in economic development. However, that money was placed into the economic development budget as a placeholder and predominantly as identified by finance, that money was to be used and has been used, I believe, for the purposes of uh, the air noise issues associated with the airport. But this is what economic development has to work with uh, every year. Um, it breaks down to looking something like this. 80% of the budget is on personnel. I don't have anything to do to control about that and it's overhead. Um, services and admin, admin makeup, um, I apologize for you that that should have been, that was corrected and it didn't come up. Um, but it, the, the two combined make up 20%. One is 14, services is 14, and admin and supplies is six. I apologize. I don't know why that we saved that, and it still didn't, didn't correct itself. Our economic development stakeholders are many. Um, I'll try to give you some indication of the magnitude of the amount of people that we work with on a daily basis. The number one element associated is between myself and the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, Rebecca Martin. We spend considerable time working together and even more so during COVID-19. These are just some of the organizations that I work with on a weekly basis to be able to bring the services to bear as a, a one-person shop. Um, key to this discussion is the following chart. Um, we have economic development and work in redevelopment, predominantly in the downtown area, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Then the lodging tax advisory committee and the work that's gone on there, which has been absolutely substantial. The one that, so we used to have our work broken down into three categories, and those were the big three. That was it for the most part. Economic development had some breakdowns regarding finance and research, but for the most part, that was focused on business retention and attraction and expansion. We've added, obviously, and had no choice into this matter in 2020, COVID-19. And that has been a, 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 a very significant lift. Um, as, the, as Bill identified, one of the things that was not identified um, was what we, the mayor, turned to me and asked me to develop a framework for a strategy for COVID-19. And that was Prosperity's Beckons. We started that, as you know, together in March, and we've been working on that ever since. In, part, in, in, in development of that, we also have the Community Continuity Task Force and the Bus Business Resiliency Task Force. Along with that, um, we've also taken on the, the responsibilities associated with grant uh, uh, management and operations such as the CARE Act, at the day, we're at about a thousand plus business assistance grants. Um, we're finishing up round two. I'll be able to provide you with all uh, prescriptive analytics associated with that going forward. We also undertook the King County um, program, which we're working on on financial consulting, reopening tourism and hospitality education, tourism training programming, to ensure uh, that we have a community that is prepped and ready when when the when the appropriate time occurs. We're also doing obviously small business assistance grant programming that continued the PPP, which we spent considerable time working on early on in the process, along with the idle grants. And of course, something that we're uh, Adea Arawula and I are very proud of, and as you may have read this past week, we put out our 30th edition of the weekly um, Federal Way uh, COVID-19 uh, memo and corresponding supplemental articles that you receive that I hope provide some very good insight for you. But that has been a major lift on, on economic development. And so other things have uh, had to shift or slide. 
and I would be on it uh, uh, remiss if I didn't tell you that I'm probably anywhere from six to eight weeks behind on, in, on given projects at this point. Uh, we then moved into LTAC, uh, the Korean Sports Festival, the Speedo Junior National Swimming Championships, I'll talk about these later, the digital sign, the tourism enhancement grants, the hospitality education tourism training program, which we continue to do in the uh, airport welcome that we always do every year. Uh, under economic development, which is predominantly business attraction, retention, and expansion, and I want to answer uh, something very important to uh, Council Member uh, Coachmark. I do listen to everything that you say, everything, and when you look at these companies, these are all in and around the Seattle-based area. So keep up the good work. Keep telling me what to do. I deliver those. Old Navy and Skechers are coming. I guess, granted, they are national chains, but they are coming. Pat Bay Kenworth is a consolidation of many sites in the Puget Sound of Federal Way because of our excellent customer service. The Australian company, which we did not get to welcome, uh, but is across the street from us here in Federal Way uh, City Hall, is a Consumer Credit Corp, which is employing three to 400 residents. Very proud of that. In addition, we have our annual meeting with the Foreign Consulate Association of Washington. That very reason why we do that is because of the Consumer Credit Corp. We are the only city in the state of Washington that hosts the foreign consulates. And this is what we're getting on an annual basis because of that. In addition, last year, and I remember this well, Mayor, you do too, we held just before uh, the end of the year, the uh, community investment connection with the Federal Reserve and, and HUD. It was excellent, it was well attended and it laid the groundwork for what has helped us in helping our businesses in federal way with COVID because it introduced us to the bankers, which we never had had an opportunity to sit with 80 some odd bankers in a room at one place at one time. And that has enabled us to be able to build these relationships to call on behalf of our small business people to find out what's going on with the um, federal programs, the PPP, the IDLE and, and the Main Street programming. In addition, we, we continue to work with uh, the Small Business Assistance Program at Highline College, produced a biannual publication, the Economic Development Activity Report. And of course, the, the effort associated with the university initiative, um, they are in, in agree, um, arrangements and agreements with a, a site just off of Pack Highway and 324th uh, as a temporary element associated with uh, getting that satellite campus up and running. Redevelopment is uh, a, a, another uh, animal that we, we uh, play a great amount of attention to. I, I know that you were very busy this last, uh, last fall. Uh, one of the major activities that we undertook was a full um, market analysis on the downtown. And it was the city's first direct and email cam a campaign and website. You can find it at Discover Downtown Federal Way. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful site. Um, it drives one of our larger um, email and website campaigns that we've had. Within the context of that was a trilogy of reports that looked at the marketplace, the magnitude of what we're dealing with and the strengths and weaknesses of our area. Uh, within the context of that, we had a retail gap and leakage analysis done. I could spot a talk further on that later. Uh, of course, TC3, and as a mayor identified, a future on uh, reuse of uh, the Target building. Uh, our annual meeting with all, all the downtown property owners, which is well uh, attended. Um, our business retention and relocation um, as it pertained to the impact of Sound Transit. Myra, please understand that we helped a lot more, but I wanted to highlight at least three, Sound Credit Union, Washington Federal, and Azteca Restaurant. It is important for you to remember the first two, Sound Credit and Washington Federal because if we had not saved it, there would have been viewed as a disintermediation of capital in federal way. And that would have raised every question by every investor coming here, particularly as it relates to opportunity zones. Why did federal way lose money? What was going on? Is there a decline in our economy? No, it's not gonna be the case. They're here um, and they're doing well and we're very happy about that case. And by the way, Washington federal, does all of their SBA construction lending out of the Federal Way office, and that is the largest SBA construction office in the state. Uh, then, of course, we continue to work on the Opportunity Zone, and we have projects coming forward in 2021. I'll be addressing to you more about in the weekly memo 
and in face the base uh, interview. Um, as it relates to future achievements for 2021-22, we uh, listened to you um, uh, I I as we came out of the out of your uh, retreat in February to become a tech hub. We will pivot on uh, projects and, and and work on on that. Um, I would expect that sometime in the first quarter, I will have an outline for you of a strategy on what we need to do and get your direction and input on that. Meanwhile, I'll be working on expanding the tax base. There are many more retailers that are headed to federal way. They're in negotiations. The prices, strangely enough, even during COVID and what is going on here, the prices on rent are going up. Yes, they are going up. So we're having to work that much more diligently on it. The other thing under redevelopment is a permanent location for the University of Washington Highline uh, Community College Satellite Campus. We'll need to be working on that. Um, again, we've had this conversation with you before about a parking garage at TC3. That will need to be um, further discussed. We do have financing that, that needs to be used within a timely manner that we have for our lift program. We need to have a discussion with you. Again, the LTAC, I'll talk about that in a minute. COVID-19, all I can tell you is we know what we don't know. There are no buildings that are in ashes, underwater, or in rubble. What we don't know and the difficulty associated with this is what their business financial status is. I do not know the profitability, leverage, liquidity, or asset, fixed asset, uh, ratios of these companies. I can't tell you on any given day until their lights go dark where they're at financially. And that makes it difficult. Um, as it relates to other ones, I support you folks, um, the departments. Um, I do, I'm very proud of something. Um, the effort regarding um, the new market tax credit and the uh, financing of the PAC, that effort is begun. It is called Mission Community Nutrition. That is the first phase of the three phase project to get us to the uh, traditional and indigenous food movement program. It is online. It is a TV program that we have produced. Um, it is a tremendous undertaking. First episode, pilot episode is online to, at uh, www nutritious communities. It will be followed by what's called community chefs. And that will be a half an hour program uh, with uh, celebrating and highlighting uh, local community chefs, all the ethnicities, all the backgrounds, all the lovely traditional and indigenous foods that are served in our community will be highlighted in that program as we work towards the uh, traditional indigenous uh, culinary arts institute. Again, uh, you've heard me talk about this in the COVID issue, the uh, legislation to prevent predatory lending in this last week's memo. You saw extensively the issues of how women-owned businesses particularly are being um, horribly uh, impacted by the access and availability or lack thereof uh, to capital, and that's an important element. The other thing that you've seen written extensively, and I know that Council President, you and Council Member Asefa Dawson have talked to me at length about the child care operators and business in the community. We're working on that. We will continue to work on that. Uh, with staff and, and with you and under your direction and a whole host of other community folks. And of course, the thing that I think everyone has come to appreciate and particularly the mayor is the economic development internship program, which is probably one of the finest anywhere in the state. So with that, I conclude economic development. I can take questions now or I can continue <coughs> on back and we can take questions at the end. I'll defer to you, Mayor, and what you'd like. Uh, let's take questions at right, right now. Council President Honda. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, in your budget for salaries, Tim, oh, by mm -hmm. the way, thank you for your presentation. Sure. Does that include your intern salaries? Uh, it would for uh, the current year, yes. And how many interns do you have? Well, at this year, I had seven. They worked uh, only 20 hours a week. I had 20, I had seven interns that were working 20 hours a week remotely. Then when I got into the summer, I only had uh, four. Okay. So, uh, June, July, uh, and August, I had four. Um, shortened shortened uh, season this year. 
kids, uh, they're they're really good, but they're having a re they're they're digitally native, but they do not do well in working in remote situations. And they would they told you that in a weekly memo, they did not like working week. They did not like working remotely. They wanted to get this integration between professional staff and themselves to enhance their um, their experience. Um, would you mind talking a little bit about where the interns are from and <clears throat> how you recruit them? Sure. So if you, again, I'll reflect back on a weekly memo. I introduced all of them to you. We did a background with a photo of each one of them. Um, this occurs every year uh, after the first of the year approval uh, of the um, of the Port of Seattle grant. I then begin the process with um, human resources to go out and um, uh, reach out to colleges and universities in the Puget Sound area. That will include everybody from Pacific Lutheran University, Puget Sound, Seattle Pacific University, Seattle, University of Seattle, UW, Seattle, Tacoma, and everybody in between. They respond. Um, it's typically a very nice response, typically more than 50 people, but I can remember not this year, but last year, I had 210 applicants, I believe. And wow. I interviewed each and every one of them to give them the respect that they gave us by applying. And uh, it was a staggering amount of work, but it was well worth it. And the people that we had were absolutely phenomenal. This year, not so much the same because the students had a tough time really trying to gauge where they wanted to be. But we've had everyone that's come out of the program is employed, working in great programs. I'm very proud. The very first one that we had, Marie Baker. Uh, Mayor, I don't know if you remember, Marie. It was six years ago, sir. Oh, yeah. We course. went on to work um, and handling uh, the COVID-19 issue for the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. And wow. boy, oh boy, she had a job and a half and uh, she was been offered a job by Governor Inslee and she's coming home. So we're very proud of the, the, all of the students that we've had working for us. It is a tremendous effort. We appreciate it. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, was I have that one it? more uh, question. Yeah, please go uh, ahead. Um, the parking garage. I know I've been talking with a day about this for quite a while. Um, I, I don't like to spend money and I don't like to have the city necessarily build things, but I know this will be very important in our downtown core and has the potential to be a moneymaker for us, especially when light rail gets here. Uh, what do we need to do to move forward with this? Because we've been talking about it for quite a while, but uh, what do we need to do to move forward? Well, I think let me, uh, let me let me let me just uh, address it first. Is that okay. you know clearly before uh, before we would have to be able to do that kind of thing, we'd have to get consensus from the council first. So this is um, and we obviously are the council has now authorized um, the uh, legal counsel to initiate legal proceedings to uh, clear the operating easement. Um, you know, with the uh, owners of the OEA, the Operating Museum Agreement, uh, as it relates uh, to the target property, that litigation is not commenced yet. What that litigation means is if we have to do that, we we will have to come up with a public use uh, and identify a public use for the property. One of the public uses is possibly a uh, either use the property itself for parking or a parking garage. But I wanna make sure it's, it's very clear that we're not getting the car before the horse or the parking garage before the car, uh, so to speak, um, before the council has come to a consensus and gives us direction on that. And, you know, so we would number one have to, number one, we'd have to file this this uh, uh, operating easement, file this lawsuit to clear the easement, essentially to condemn it, then prevail in that and during that process, bring the council along, make sure there's co consensus for a parking garage. And then there will be a whole plethora of steps in between and, and forward. So that's, I think that's a little further afield. It is a we possible had, use. Uh, um, we had, well, I had talked to um, a day about the location before, and we had thought maybe behind the pack where the hotel was originally going to go. 
but that was before the Target uh, property right. yeah. became available. I think actually, you know, and, and once again, I want to be, you know, I, I think we're, I want to be careful about exactly, I, I, you know, I don't want to, right. you know, uh, get too far ahead and, and uh, we're, we're obviously on the public record right now. So um, I want to make sure right. that, the, the, that the will of the council and the community is clearly expressed. I think there would have to be, we would need to reach out to the community. We'd also, uh, Susan, or Council President Honda, we would really need to think about if we were going to build a garage, would it be, you know, you, you, you know, is that something we'd charge the public for? What would we charge? How would that, how would that, there's a whole plethora of issues. Um, we've got parking issues downtown. Should it be free? Should it be charged? If we charge, then we can actually recoup a lot of money, but is that the right thing to do? So we've got some things we've got to work out. Oh, I, un I understand there's a lot to work out. I just, we've talked and talked. I, I, more interested now in moving on to the next steps and to we either do it or we don't do it but you know talking doesn't get us anywhere at this point um you know the just, next thing we need to the next thing we need to do is start initiate the litigation and then resolve the litigation okay. before we could do that that's probably the most that's okay, the most important you. thing i hope that answers but okay. you know what i i know that you had directed that question initially to tim so that's my perspective uh, I, I do want to make sure that tim has an opportunity to answer your question though tim okay, did you want to take a bite at that <laughs> thank you mayor i'm gonna i'm gonna only add, add that just for the council's purposes you have the lift dollars that are available we are on a time clock with that that's all i wanted to provide you mayor thank you okay Okay, thank you. I, I want to make sure that people, uh, the, the key th takeaway from this though, is I don't want people to think that that, this, that the idea of having a parking garage is not a done deal yet. It has actually been decided by council. So, okay, uh, council member Asafa Dawson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Tim. Um, and thank you for all the work that you do for us. I really appreciate you. Um, my question is around opportunity zone. Um, I know it was designated several years back. Does it, at some point, especially with Sound Transit coming, does it change that designation in any way, form, or shape? No, it does not. In fact, it enhances the ability. The quicker that we can get to a proposed project, uh, the better off it will be. There are two new, uh, there, there, you have the opportunity zone, and then you now have the um, seismic and energy program called PACER, which is a county program that the governor signed into effect for all of the counties to participate in, which is like an LID and how you finance your development. So when you couple the tax credits coupled with the LID like financing that allows the individual to work with a financial institution, you have what I have never seen in my 40 years of working in economic development a financing on steroids that should bring what you folks want to federal way in a heartbeat it, it is really phenomenal looking forward to that uh, but uh, no uh, it, it doesn't change anything it just continues to help us okay thank you so much okay council any other questions okay great thank you very much all right, now we're under the council uh, presentation. Council President Honda. Great, thank you, Tim. Great job. Oh, you know what? Actually, LTAC. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's you're right. I know we did LTAC. questions. That's right. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tim, you're not done yet. Somebody get Tim back. There you are. Um, that's what we get for uh, uh, breaking it up. Um, we need you to do LTAC, please. Hang on just a minute, Mayor. I apologize. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're underway. <clears throat> if I can get my fat fingers to work, we're underway. You excuse me for a moment. There we go. Okay, our mission is to promote market tourism in federal way. I think this uh, graph tells the tale. Um, the red line that you see on this bar graph is the decline in revenue. Hey, Tim. Yes, Tim. sir. No we can't see your press. 
Yeah, we, we can't see your presentation. Well, hang on for a minute. There, IT will work on it. Okay. They're working on a shared screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Uh, yeah, but can you enlarge it? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. There we go. Very good. So, okay. There we go. Thank you for your patience. Appreciate it to everyone. I think this chart again um, speaks for itself. The red bar that you see is, is this year, and you can see the immediate impact that it has had on the tourism and particularly the hotel industry in federal way. It has basically dropped to 50% of what we uh, typically do on an annual basis and have been. Um, it's about $150,000 in, in revenue um, for, for this year. I want to share this with you of where we were going and how important this is and how, how quickly and fast this impacted our economy. We hit, Federal Way hit a high water mark in December with the highest amount of lodging tax ever acquired. And that was because you and the committee had directed the city to go after and support the recruitment of the Speedo Junior National Championships here. And that event coupled with the Husky Open during the month of December just blew out all the great, wonderful uh, hotel rooms in our community and surrounding area. So when they hit January, they thought they were slow, which is normally a, um, a slow month and we're working on that. Uh, February came back with the Northwest Championships, the uh, Collegiate Championships, um, the Washington Open, and then the beginning of the Pac-12s. And then we continued into March and we just got in the NC2A regional diving championships before they closed everything down. But this has an eerie feel to what happened in the Great Recession as identified in the, the bar chart. And if you look at it, it took us uh, almost four years to come back from the Great Recession. Um, will that be the case this time around? No. Um, to the best of my knowledge, working with Mike Dunwoody, who you all know over at King County Aquatic Center, all of the major events are coming back again. They're prepared. It will not, however, include spectators. It will be athletes, but not spectators. And that includes the NC2A National Championships. They are planning to be here. It will still have a very large impact on our economy, but just unfortunately not the tourists. Now, I wanna stop for a minute and share a very important issue with you. As you know, and you've approved this in every budget line item, and then a day and his team work on it and putting it into a set aside account, that every year we hold money in advance for future proposals for the NC2A championships and for the Olympic trials. Um, in that regard, we have a fairly handsome uh, treasure trust set aside to be able to do that. Unlike other cities, apparently, as the story goes, the NC2A called me and Mike Dunwitty and asked us on a conference call, could we host the national championships, the NC2A men's and women's, in 23, 24, 25, and 26? Unequivocally, we answered yes, because we have the money in the bank. We shared those accounts with them. And they now know that Federal Way, unlike other cities that we have been typically lost out to and can com and competition with, have the money and they don't. So this looks pretty good on our agenda moving forward once we can get through uh, maybe the next year. And I'm very proud of, 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 of working for all of you and having that conservative, fiscal conservative nature, I think is going to put us in an excellent position in years to come. Um, here's what our budget has looked like. Um, the committee will be amending the $305,000, $200,000 budget to one fifty five. dollars They're aware of that. We can achieve with it. When COVID let go in March, we immediately sized everything down, not knowing what would happen. So we are in good shape. I will inform you that we have $1.3 million in a fund balance 
including a $200,000 reserve account. So kudos to all of you in the direction that you've given us. We will operate mayor in 2021 with $155,000 with a forecasted revenue of about 200,000 and move on in 2022 with a $200,000 budget. Now, if things change, we can change and don't have any expenditures or anything to worry about, we'll be okay. So we're not in a, in a situation where we're going to be upside down at all for years to come. Again, we've been very conservative in our fiscal directions. This is pretty much what it looks like. <clears throat> um, other includes that fairly large sum that's been used for uh, the NC2As um, in, in the special events that we hope like PAC-12. Uh, we will put in $20,000 for the Tourism Enhancement Grant we will provide 20,000 on the, working on the hospitality, education, tourism, and tra uh, uh, training program. We work with the chamber on that. That's an excellent program. There are very few uh, in the in the state, let alone in the nation, that do that. And uh, we've actually will will um, have 15,000 available uh, in administration, but uh, 10,000 of that goes to the Seattle Sports Commission and their help uh, to continue to grow and expand our uh, economic base. Um, accomplishments over 2019 and 20, obviously, is the new digital sign that you see out on 348th and Enchanted at 16th. Uh, thank you to Public Works for all of their hard work on that. That sign came in under budget and under time. Couldn't have been done without E.J. Walsh and his tremendous staff over Public Works. Deployment of the TED grants did occur in 2019. Um, we went through the process of applications and reviews but there was no ability to be able to deploy those because the programs were all canceled. Uh, there is an online deployment of the hospitality education tourism training program. It's first of its kind in the Puget Sound, and that is in the midst of efforts going on right now. We continue our maintenance and update of our website. There's nearly 50,000 hits on that uh, annually, although I must admit it has been impacted by the COVID and tourism uh, reduction. Uh, we have our continued advertisements is supported by um, uh, the Port of Seattle, which provides us that opportunity to welcome people when we have special events. Again, we hosted major events during the course of the last two years. There they are there. That NC2A Regional Diving Championship is going to help us get back into the good graces of USA Diving and hopefully host the Olympic trials again. Uh, we do promotion of events, if, uh, and I think you've all seen those on Channel 21 and our Visit Federal Way website. Um, we're one of the very few communities in the state that actually uses our, our television station for the purposes of highlighting special events. And we are, as you know, have hired Washington State University, and they are in the midst of doing an off-season event program analysis for us, and they will be completed with a good portion of that by the end of the year and be able to provide you with an update on what we need to do. Um, as it looks for uh, uh, 2021 and 22, again, hosting of the, the national championships, preparation for um, uh, the NC2A uh, Division I Swimming and Championships for 2023 and 26. Let me just quickly remind you, Division Three is like people like Pacific Lutheran and University of Puget Sound. Uh, Division One is like Washington State, UCLA, Cal, Stanford, the folks that you see up here for the Pac-12 championships. Big difference in, in the level of swimmers. Uh, we'll be continuing, even though we have not set aside, we will continue to be working with Public Works on the next site location for the next digital site. Hospitality, education, tourism, and training program will continue on. Completion of the off-season uh, tourism plan. A deployment of uh, the tourism enhancement grants. Uh, we think that that's very important, even though it's at a reduced level. At some point, we will develop uh, a video uh, uh, for uh, tourism for Federal Way, and we will be preparing bids for the International Underwater Robotics Competition. If you recall, that was an enormous event that occurred in 2018. It was not under it was not shadowed by the Special Olympics, which I thought it would be. That, but we had 2,400 people here from 64 different countries. It was the most amazing week I had ever, ever witnessed. I thought we were the miniature UN for a week. I was so overwhelmed by that. And in addition to, we have the Women's Collegiate Conference softball tournaments and collegiate soccer tournaments that we'll be hosting hopefully at the celebration. With that, 
um, we did not get to the approval of the Tourism Promotion Agency. Uh, that was something that we had hoped to, to accomplish in this year and because of COVID that got uh, sidetracked, unfortunately. And that is a tax, a self-tax by the hotelers that's used um, and under your tutelage and direction um, and for the discretionary spending for tourism promotion. That looks like now we'll have to pump, uh, jump, push to 2022. With that, I'll take any questions. Okay, Council President Honda. Um, I guess I forgot to take my hand down, but I, I wanted to say that I can't see the screens, so I'm at oh. a disadvantage today. Um, ah. I'm hoping to get this fixed. I'm not sure what's going on mm. with my iPad, so. But I don't. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you very uh, much. Appreciate it, Council Member. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Stephanie. Uh, now that we are done with our budget presentations for the Mayor's Office, uh, Tim Johnson, and, and oh, now we move on to uh, City Council. Um, uh, we got Council President Honda. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to remind you in a second. <laughs> See how far you went with that. All right. So um, Jerry Lynn is in the office and will be handling the uh, computer stuff. And um, so I can't see the screen on my iPad. So I'm. This is a proposed budget for the council. I'd like to um, thank the council for the work that they've done this year and the commitment they've made for the next two years and all the work that they would like to do. If you go to page, um, the next page, please. So the, that photo for the public, uh, when we appointed uh, council member Baruso, uh, Council Member Copang was still with us and we tried to get together to, to have a photo of all of the council. We weren't able to because of COVID. And um, Jerry Lynn Clark came up with an idea of using our official photographs that are on the wall downstairs as, as this is our official council picture uh, for now. And when COVID is over, we will once again get a picture taken of all of the council and the mayor as we normally do. So uh, thank you for that, Jerry Lynn. Next, please. So this is a chart of uh, the council and what we do. We represent the people of Federal Way. We adopt ordinances and resolutions. We grant franchises. We levy taxes and appropriate funds. We establish policy. We approve the city budget. We appoint commissioners and we confirm the mayor's appointees. We have city committees, the finance, economic development and regional affairs committee, which we call FEDRAC, land use and transportation, which we call LUTC, parks, recreation, human services and public safety, which we just call parks. Those meet on a monthly basis. We also have the lodging tax advisory committee, which we call LTAC. And that uh, by state law is chaired by a city council person. We have one staff member, which is Jerry Lynn Clark, and she works 0.7% um, of 70% uh, of the time for us. And uh, in reality, she works 100% of the time plus more because she's always available, but we're not charged for 100% of her time. We have boards and commissions, and these are really important to council. We have the Arts Commission, the Diversity Commission, Human Services Commission, Independent Salary Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission, the Planning Commission, the Senior Advisory Commission, the Youth Commission, North Lake management and Steel Lake management advisory committees. 
The Civil Service Commission reports to the mayor and not to the council. And we hold um, interviews on a regular basis. We have openings on these commissions throughout the year. If a citizen is interested in serving, we ask that you uh, go to the city's webpage. You can fill out an application and send it in to the city clerk and they will keep that on file. We also advertise the positions when they're available, but it's best to, um, if you're interested in one of these commissions to get your application in and we will hold it until we have a, a, the interviews for that commission. Um, next page, please. So the next page is our key accomplishments. In 2019, we had 22 regular council meetings and 27 special council meetings. We had 44 committee meetings, passed 28 resolutions, 21 ordinances. In 2020, we had so far 18 regular meetings, 14 special council meetings. And I would say because of COVID, our, meet, our special council meetings have been uh, more restricted than they have been in the past. We had 33 committee meetings and our committee meetings have kept meeting during COVID uh, with the governor's permission. We've passed 18 resolutions and 12 ordinances and we have reached two agreements with franchises. This is information as of October 6th. We've been a busy council and uh, that's the way we like it because we like to be busy. Uh, next page, please. So the city council as a whole is quite busy representing federal way on the regional and local committees. Um, we serve on the um, Association of Washington City Large City Committee I am the co-state director for the National Foundation for Women Legislators. This is a group of um, an organization that both Lydia Sefa Dawson and I attend and contribute to. It is made up of all women who are elected in the state, in the um, country. It's an amazing organization. I just attended a webinar today on that they offered. We have representation on the Domestic Violence Initiative Regional Task Force, Economic Development District Board, the Federal Way Domestic Violence Task Force, the Highline Forum, King County Board of Health, Regional Law, Safety and Justice Committee, SCA, Sound Cities Association Events Committee, the Public Issues Committee, or we call it the PIC, South County Area Transportation Board, which we call Skateboard, and the council created the first senior advisory commission. They just completed their first year of um, being a commission and they've done an amazing job. This list does not represent all of the work that council members do in the community, in service organizations, uh, sports organizations, working with the schools on different school committees and in um, our local churches. So as a whole, the currently six members, but we usually have seven council members are really busy in our community. We're out there representing the city. We're uh, working with our citizens and um, it's something that we all enjoy doing and we are all very, very busy. Our council goals, which is the next page, please. These were developed at our last retreat and our vision statement is, as a fast growing tech hub, Federal Way offers an ideal lifestyle for families and businesses. So our last retreat, we looked at it as a 10 year work in progress and our goals and our vision statement are something that we know that we can't accomplish all in one year that we need to plan ahead. And hopefully in the next 10 years, we will be the fastest growing tech hub in this area. We're ideally suited for that. We're um, our location in the Puget Sound and we think we can attain that. Our goals, and this is really important because the this city budget 
and the council goals need to interact and they need to meet. And so it's important to know that our goals will reflect what the city budget um, is. And the mayor worked really hard to, to look at our goals when he created the budget. The first goal is to increase sustainability revenue streams to fully fund the city budget programs and infrastructure. We'd like to address public safety issues for residents and businesses. City government will develop a plan to realize our 2030 vision of becoming a tech hub and develop a plan to site the OMF at the Midway landfill in coordination with the South King County cities. Um, that's the maintenance yard that Sound Transit would like to put um, in the middle of Federal Way. And we've had a lot of discussion on that. So these goals were created in January. Um, not knowing what the year was going to hold, maybe they would have been a little bit different knowing COVID, but we had no idea in January that COVID was coming and what it was gonna to do to the world. Uh, the next slide, please, oh, already there. Thank you, Jerry Lynn. So our proposed operating budget totals $525,655.21 and $530,695 in 2022. This is a 3.4% increase, and that's um, due to health insurance premium expenses for the employer and council members. The only um, changes would include a decrease of $12,918, um, and this is because there's been some confusion as to who, how many hours or percentage of Jerry Lynn's time is paid for by the council and how much is paid by community development. And I think we've worked that out now. And there is an increase of $30,361 due to increased health insurance premiums. We have no control over this. This um, is just something that happens and the council has no control over that. We only have the one employee in the council office and um, that's 70% of her time is dedicated to us. And I would be remiss if I don't thank Jerry Lynn Clark and the day Arua for their assistance in this budget. They've, um, they're an amazing uh, group of people to work with and I really, really appreciate their assistance and their help. Any questions? Okay, council, any questions? Any uh, any hands to go up? Okay, I don't see any hands. Uh, great job, Council no. President Hunted. Oh, oh Council Member Seth Dawson. Yes, thank okay. you. Um, thank you, Council President Honda. That was a great presentation and a lot of stuff that you were saying. It's like, well, yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize we've done so much, but I think also it would be uh, remiss if we don't mention that we're in the process of joining um, 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 NLC. That's correct, thank um, you for, yes. Yeah, that one and there was something else. And also that we are um, trying to work on equity work. Um, we don't know what it's gonna look like yet, but the fact that we're at least looking at training and, and something that is um, tangible. Um, so I just wanted to bring up those two points. Um, Good. Po thank you for reminding me about that. We were going to hold uh, training for equity and um, uh, what's the other word I want to bring out? Um, inclusion and rate. Um, inclusion, right. Uh, we had even council member Sefa Dawson, myself and Jerry Lynn Clark had even interviewed a presenter, which seems like a long time ago. It was must have been last spring, I think, we, when we did that. And we had planned to have a workshop for all council members and commission members. We wanted to include our commission members in this. It was going to be after our regular um, retreat. And after that retreat, uh, COVID hit and we haven't had time to do it, but we do intend to do it as soon as we can. And it's important to do that when we can be in person because we it would be a much better training. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you so much. Okay. Council, any, uh, any other questions, comments? 
Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, great job. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, do we have any public comment? No, Mayor. We don't have anyone signed up. Okay. All right. And that's uh, what we have for this budget session. Uh, we will reconvene and. Uh, uh, just a few minutes, uh, roughly 29 minutes for the uh, regular city council meeting at 630. So um, with that, uh, we are adjourned until then. Thank you very much.